Hello, YouTube, it's me, Bobcat1939, bringing you a review for chapter 762. This chapter of One Piece was amazing. Oda has outdone himself, and I had a Frankie moment reading this chapter because, damn, it was dark. So, basically, we'll go from the beginning to the end and the way it was just set out was amazing. So, it's been a week since Law was thrown out a window. He's still angry at Corazon, wants to kill him. Do Flamingo's like, yeah, well, he's my brother. If anyone hurts him, I'll kill them. And uh, among this conversation, we see the Don Quixote pirates, and they really let themselves go in between this flashback and the flashback of when they took over Dressrosa and then even more so between that and current time I've been looking at a few pictures like showing the development of the appearances and there's a lot of change and we might talk about that later we'll see how long this video goes on for so anyway basically Jola talks about how Law's looks very pale. No, uh, Mac Vice says Law looks very pale. Jolly says, it's the white lead poisoning! Um, to which Buffalo freaks out. He's like, poisoning? Illness? Don't come near me, you're contagious! And Doflamingo's like, guys, stop it. It's not contagious, it's just poison. Um, <clears throat> and then we skip to the actual flashback of what happened um, to Law before he came to meet the Don Quixote pirates. And the way that this story is told is through um, Baby Five wanting to know more about the White City and what it was and the Don Quixote pirates basically explaining what happened. And so this is what happened. A hundred years prior the people in the White City um, discovered that there was this lead under the ground that they could mine and it was really valuable and it made like really amazing bricks and paints and all sorts and so they started like mining it up and using it and selling it and what the world government found out was actually this stuff when you mine it up and stuff it's poisonous so it's kind of like real lead in a sense and the king at the time and the government decided to not say anything because it was really valuable and they wanted to make a profit. So for a hundred years these people were mining up this stuff and using it and it was poisoning them but slowly. So these people were like very poisoned but they didn't know it until they got old like in their 70s. But when they had kids, their kids had a shorter life expectancy. So their kids would only live to say 50. And then their kids would only live until 30. And their kids would only live until 10. And, they, and eventually it got to the point where there would be no more kids. But because of the generational gap, by the time people realised it was too late because everyone got ill at the same time and everyone like succumbed to the poison within the space of like a year or summer. So then when this happened, because it happened so fast and because it happened all at once, everyone around thought it was like some sort of contagious disease and stopped anyone leaving the country and if anyone tried to escape they'd be shot on sight. The royalty got away with the government because we all know how the world government in One Piece works. And yeah, so everyone's getting ill and people are not letting them out of the country and if they try they're shooting them on sight. But the people in the White City have lead bullets so they start fighting back which makes things worse and so people start coming in to attack them. And it gets to the point where we have Law, just a kid, and 
there's this sister from a church and she's like, come on, they said they're not going to hurt kids. We've got to go out. We've got to get out of here. We'll find a doctor who will cure us. And Laura's like, no, I'm staying here. My sister's dying. I need to be with her and my family. And so all these kids and this sister, they're like, okay, if that's what you really want. But, you know, there's hope out there. These kids, they're the future generation. They're going to be the ones to, they're going to be saved. You know, they've got so much hope. So Lord goes back to his uh, sister and she's like dying and it must be because she's younger. Um, I don't know how it works, this illness, but because she's younger, she's dying first. So she's really ill and uh, Lord's parents are, are really ill and Lord's dad's like, there's got to be a, this isn't like a contagious disease, it's poison, there's got to be like a cure or something. Why isn't the government doing anything about this? And there's gunshots, and Law's like freaking out. He goes out, and his parents have been shot, and he's like devastated. He runs out further, and the sister from the church and all the other children are all laying on the ground, dead. They've all been killed. And Law, at this point, is just like absolutely broken. He's lost his parents. He's lost his friends and like all these people from his local church or something. And yeah, he turns around and the hospital that his sister's in is on fire. So Law lost everything. And yeah, he escaped the city um, by hiding amongst a load of corpses that were being taken away. I mean, how edgy can Law get at this point? And also because th this like white lead that was the reason that's has something to do with why Doflamingo shot Law with lead bullets, and maybe that could mean that Law has because we know that Law is a didn't die because of the poisoning, and we think that has something to do with Corazon. But whether or not he's now poisoned again, we don't know. Also, I'm totally shipping Baby Five and Laura at this point, just because of their dynamic that they had at the beginning of this chapter. And what ends up happening is Law finds Corazon at the end of this chapter, and he's like, Why is it that my parents, my sister, everyone from my church, everyone I cared about, is dead, and yet scum like you is allowed to live and he goes up and stabs Corazon what seems to be through the heart possibly not but it looks like that's pretty much where the heart is and Lord just with a knife straight through Corazon's chest and yeah Buffalo sees him and goes to report to Doflamingo so whether Lord kills Corazon at that point or there's something else going on. I have no idea. Is it is because there's supposedly two Corazons with Law could have become the third. So who knows where this is gonna go? But damn, this was just an amazing chapter. Kind of thrown off by the change of appearance that all the Don Quixote pirates made, like um, Senior Pink getting really fat and Mac Vice getting really fat and within the space of like five years Leo G going from a 54 year old buff guy to a 60 year old shrunken shriveled old guy also Dellinger is a baby we see and he's sitting on Jola's lap I don't know if this is like Jola's kid or something um, who knows We'll have to, maybe Oda will reveal that in um, one of the question columns later on. Um, but we'll have to see. Anyway, this chapter was absolutely amazing. So edgy. Thankfully, Manga Panda didn't do as bad a job this week. Although the Chaos Marines were certainly... Um, had their hand at some of the lines in this chapter. But anyway, tell me what you think uh, down below. What do you think of, like, the lead poisoning and Law's backstory? Do you think 
Corazon's dead. <sighs> wow. Great chapter. Anyway, take care, guys.